What's your definition of greatness? I think the definition of greatness is to inspire the people next to you. My parents were, were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity. And understanding that, okay, if you want to accomplish something, I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there. You grow up as a kid thinking that all things are possible if you put in the work to do it. You, know, you grow up having that fundamental belief. Uh, my father uh, was really influential at a really critical time where I, you know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And here I come playing and I don't score one point the entire summer. I scored not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it, being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm gonna love you no matter what. That is the most important thing that you can say to a child. That gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> From there, I just went to work. And I just wow. I stayed with it. I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important. Because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year. Right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is going to take some thought. I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Open shots. Not miss open shots. Be able to shoot it with speed. Because those kids are so much more athletic. So it's a simple thing of math. If you want to be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours. Every single day, over the course of a year, how much better are you getting? If you're obsessively training two, three hours every single day, over a year, over two years, you make quantum leaps. Show up every single day, do the work. They're looking at me as if, okay, this kid's soft. Right? He's from the suburbs of Philadelphia. They felt like they could try to be physical or try to intimidate me and do all this other stuff, which they couldn't. Now I'm saying, okay, well, you're trying to attack me. How am I going to attack you? One of the things I would do is while everybody would be at the cafeteria work, you know, eating and doing all sort of stuff, I'd just go back to the gym. Yeah, I may be from the suburbs, but you're not going to outwork me. All right, look at thing, things at their smallest. A lot of times the game starts moving really fast. But if you train yourself to watch hours and hours of film, the game's not moving that fast anymore. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's an obsessiveness that comes along with it. You want things to be as perfect as they can be. Understanding that nothing is ever perfect. But the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. So how can we teach our children what it means to work hard? Well, you do it through training, right? So when I get up in the morning, my daughter goes with me. 4 a.m., my 15-year-old goes with me. It becomes a daddy-daughter thing. Through that process, she understands the value of hard work. So it's through those behaviors uh, is where I find the motivation to mm. do it. But what does losing feel like to you? Uh, it's exciting because it means you have different uh, ways to get better. There's certain things that you can figure out that you can take advantage of, right? Certain weaknesses that were exposed. Mm. There are answers there if you just look at them. It's a constant process. It's exciting when you win. It's exciting when you lose because the process should be exactly the same. The hardest thing is to face that stuff. I think it's the fear of, of starting anew. When you play for 20 years, I play for 20 years, you reach a certain level, you're like, okay, wait a minute, I have to start again at the base of a mountain and try to climb the top of this mountain. First of all, what mountain am I climbing? I don't even know, like, what the hell am I gonna be doing? The thing that helped me actually was hurting my Achilles because that forced me to sit there and say, okay, the day could be today that your career is over. First question I asked, which is the wrong question, is what's the biggest industry I can get into? I said, okay, stop thinking of it that way. You're thinking of it the wrong way. Why did you start playing basketball? Because I loved it. All right, what do you love to do? Oh, I love to tell stories. Mm. All right, let's do that. I think stories is what moves the world. Nothing in this world moves without story. And so I think that is the root of everything. And if we're gonna to try to make the world a better place, Story's the right place to start. Yeah. From uh, one of my English teachers, a little Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. That's something I always live by. I'm not gonna rest, I'm gonna keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have. Even questions that I don't have. But I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep going. 
and I'll figure these things out as you go, right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time.